From mid-century to contemporary, public to private, we're in search of the very best in art. Homes, happenings, stores, restaurants and people. Things that defy categories. The perpetual freshness and cool of modern never ceases to captivate us. Join us for another edition of Modern Dallas TV to discover what's going on and where in the modern world. Hi, I'm Empress. And I'm Micah Gilbert, the geologist and gemologist at Impressive Geodesigns. We present the finest natural decor with high quality minerals, corals, and other specimens from all over the world. We provide a variety of functional pieces, including lamps, tables, bowls, and other custom projects. Share in the beauty and wonder of these stunning gems and natural works of art. Visit us at ImpressiveGeodesigns.com. Modern Dallas Real Estate This Week is here at the Parallel House, located in Urban Reserve. And I'm here with Ed Murchison with Virginia Cook Realtors. Ed, once again, an exceptional architect designed home. What can people expect from the Parallel House? Yeah, this is a very cool house. This was a custom designed and built house designed by architects Far and Dang, which they've done, I think, now three houses here at Urban Reserve. And the builder was Alan Kagan. Uh, he's an award-winning builder that a lot of our viewers are going to be familiar with. Um, his work is followed by lots of modern enthusiasts. We have a really strong team here of a very involved owner, a great architect team, and an excellent builder. And the execution of this house, all those efforts, I think, come together. Absolutely, and it always is the success of the home, is the right. team. No right. question. Right. Every week we, we see it. But this house has got great design, it's got great features. Give us a sense. Well, this house was um, designed to be an easy to live in home. It's a single story at just under 2,700 square feet. That's a hard commodity to come by in the market today. This is set on one of the larger lots at Urban Reserve. It's kind of right in the center of the development. It's a really nice rear entry, two car garage with an oversized uh, higher ceiling. So you have lots of storage for your stuff or larger vehicles. This house, all the way through it, 15 foot ceilings vaulted, even in the master bath. I mean, when you get in that master bath and you look up in the shower, it's like, you're looking at heaven. Um, it's incredible. I think the architects did some really phenomenal things with light, and this house is a really good example of it. Throughout the house, you'll see skylights that are kind of tucked away and hidden where the light spills down the wall and you don't even know really where the light's coming from. This gives a really beautiful effect. Um, custom cabinets in this house, some incredible gray marble that I've not really seen before. And I think it's really stunning in this house. Fully integrated refrigerator, dishwasher, stainless appliances. Um, this has got one of Alan Kagan's favorite things are the uh, full height solid wood pivot doors and solid wood sliding pocket doors. Even the air conditioning vents in this house are a very modern treatment where they're just little black slits instead of the traditional, you know, ugly vent grate that you normally see. Everything in this house was custom and it's just a really spectacular house. I think one of the most important assets of this house is if you've got a great art collection, they're great walls. Yes. This house has got a tremendous full-length gallery walkway with lots of wall space for art and sculpture, um, perfect for an art collector. And obviously we're here at Urban Reserve. Right. Can we say anything about Urban Reserve? We've done it many times. Absolutely. <laughs> well, I'm so excited about um, how Urban Reserve has come along. We have one lot left. Wow. One. Uh, we've got so many houses under construction right now. They're under construction all around us, which is really exciting. Uh, so we've got now over 30 different architects who design homes here. We have seven architects that live on the street. This is one of your last opportunities to get into Urban Reserve and to get a single story house on this nice big lot. Don't miss your opportunity. Absolutely. It's 28 Vanguard Way. Right. Right. What's it listed for? Listed at 929. You can see the house on my website at midcenturymoderndallashomes.com. And if you want to see all the modern listings in Dallas, visit our website at moderndallas.net.
Ed, always a pleasure. Thank you. Guggenholm is a curated contemporary gallery highlighting art, furniture, and unique accessories for the modern home. We've looked around the world for furniture lines that reflect a new modern take on the contemporary aesthetic. Our goal is to show how art can be incorporated into your living space and we feature several local and European artists. Guggenholm, where the art of living meets the art we live with. Visit us at 1426 North Riverfront Boulevard and also at guggenholm.com. Modern Dallas Art this week is here at Chris Worley Fine Art and I'm here with Chris, the owner of the gallery. Thanks for having us. Thank you for coming. This is just an awesome show of new talent for the gallery. That's and, right. And these are four exceptional artists. I mean, Adrian, Esparza, Mark Dennis, Robert Sagerman, and obviously this piece by Sherry Owen. What a combination. To, to pull all these together for a summer group show, amazing. Thank you. Thank you. So tell us a little bit about how that came together. Well, we decided to add four new artists to the gallery's um, collection. We have been looking around um, the last couple of years and it all just kind of came together at the same time. So we took this long period over the summer to really highlight um, these four incredible talents in the show. And we're very pleased at the way it uh, came together. It's absolutely amazing. I mean, the texture, the work, the, the, you know, this piece on its own, they all have their own unique identity. Yes. Where do they fit in as an artist? Because they all have different levels within their career. How do these all fit into that? Well, I would say uh, on the whole that all of these artists are really um, at mid to um, mid career artists, meaning they are est more established. They're not emerging. They have a very long exhibition record. Um, they're in you know important collections, and they're known. And we're really pleased to bring artists of this stature to the gallery, but also to Dallas. Absolutely. So as we walk through the gallery, we look at all the pieces and their, their own personalities. Obviously, Adrian's work is very unique, very different, colorful, got a great story, Turkmenis, Texas born. Tell us a little bit about this piece and the collection and how it evolves. That's right, you said that he's Texas born and I would like to mention that there are two artists from the New York area and two Texas based artists in this show. So that also kind of reflects the national diversity um, but also the, the focus on Texas artists that we have here in the gallery. And Adrian uh, was born, raised and lives and works currently in El Paso, a border town. Um, Adrian's work is actually all derived from uh, the iconic Mexican serape, the traditional image of his culture. He unravels the blanket and uses the yarn to create these architecturally, geometrically inspired works that are very much inspired by um, postmodernism and uh, by architectural um, uh, architectural features. Uh, there's a lot of one and two point perspective in his work. Um, they're colorful, they're beautiful, but also conceptually they really mirror his experience of what it means to be a contemporary Mexican-American man navigating today's world, um, coming from a very traditional culture and then working in a, and living in a contemporary world. So, to be fair, half is in Texas, half is New York. Let's show some of the work from uh, the New York artists. Obviously behind you is uh, Robert uh, Sagerman. Yes. And this work is Mark Dennis's work, which, yes. I mean, so totally different. Right. Well, I, um, I like to see uh, an eclectic kind of uh, vision for the gallery. Uh, for me, I'm very interested in a clear vision as an artist and the ability to technically uh, manifest that vision um, in the best possible way. And so I feel like um, with Robert Sagerman's work, you see um, 
the kind of um, minimalism, obsession. There's a deep, um, it's deeply rooted in, in conceptualism as well, um, which please come to the gallery and I can tell you all about that. Uh, but um, a very clearly defined technique. Uh, likewise, Mark Dennis's photo reel paintings are immaculately uh, rendered. And this is a part of his epic floral series. All of his work is inspired by art historical references and he's taking the lavish Baroque uh, florals um, through the tradition of art history and using those in a new way and creating uh, a more contemporary uh, take on that. Well, it's exceptional. And Thank lastly, you. we'll come back to text. Tell us a little bit about the piece by Sherry Owens. Yes, Sherry Owens is a well-known Texas sculptor. She's um, been working for decades um, here in Texas. She's phenomenal. She works uh, typically with the uh, crepe myrtle branch, which she labors over intensively with um, carving and whittling, uh, painting, staining, burnishing. She uses a pegging system to put them all together. Each piece has its own narrative, its own story, and this particular work in the show, which also incorporates bronze. Um, there are her cast bronze feet on this particular piece. Um, this is a self-portrait and it's called Twirling Like a Seed in the Wind. This collection for this show is spectacular. Thank you. You've done a fine job. Thank you. <laughs> How can they find you? Well, we're located in the Dallas Design District at 1845 East Levy Street, and Turtle Creek just dead ends into the building. And online? And online, we're at chriswhirly.com. And I'm sure you're on all the social media networks. Indeed. Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. All of them. And if you want to see all the modern art listings in Dallas, visit our website at moderndallas.net. Thanks so much. Thank you. Thanks, Chris. Hello, I'm Micah Gilbert, the geologist and gemologist at Impressive Geodesigns. I'd like to share with you some of my favorite black gemstones. I love the magnificent towers of black tourmaline and the stunning quartz clusters with gemmy crystals. We have a special selection of obsidian, including bowls, points, spheres, and a variety of sculptures with unusual sheens and subtle colorations. Visit us at impressivegeodesigns.com. Modern Dallas this week is at the Dallas Center for Architecture. We're here to see the extraordinary playscapes that's on exhibit currently in the uh, exhibition space. Mm -hmm. And I'm here with Greg Brown, the program director. Greg, we all grew up in these jungle gyms. Right, right. This is a different fair I'm seeing yeah, over exactly. here. Exactly, <laughs> you're, you're not gonna see a regular swing or a slide here for the most part. Um, you know, across the world, people have realized how important play is to the development of a child. Um, and so, you know, we're looking at about 40 projects here that designers have done around the world um, that are different kind of playgrounds. So you see um, there's one called Muskrat Ramble here, which is, you know, sort of basket woven huts, uh, various bridges and other things. So it's really using some of those great design techniques and abilities to create uh, very innovative and imaginative spaces for kids to play, um, which leads to their development in a lot of ways. So, you know, Park. Gulliver. <laughs> exactly. This, the Spanish always do it right. So this is in Valencia, um, a wonderful uh, collection of designers, Rivera, Martin, and Bisbal. And it's, uh, you know, sort of this, this circle where you have this large fiberglass body of Gulliver, and he's laying down and taking his nap. And it's truly um, Gulliver proportions, because us as kids and adults who can play on it are the Lilliputians and um, you know the little tiny kids that wander around so you know great exposure to literature obviously great exposure 
um, to sort of an urban environment, things to discover. You can actually go up into Gulliver's body. There are various playscapes and things in there um, on the inside as well. And just, you know, this fun sense of whimsy. This is, you know, you, you could not miss this as you were driving by or certainly flying over it and seeing it, that it's a wonderfully imaginative kind of playscape. Yeah, and, and you know, I love the muskrat ram. Right, exactly. You know, I know you mentioned earlier, but this one in uh, Olympia, Washington. Right, these, these great sort of basket woven huts almost, it looks like. So, so very natural, but also the opportunity to sort of explore and go through. Um, you know, we had the wooden fort maybe, and this is certainly a take on that. Um, so, you know, almost these sculptural pieces that you wander through um, and take a look at and, and explore as you go. And uh, Black's Land, Riverside Park. Right, it lo looks a little more traditional, but still incorporates things that you don't see um, at most playgrounds. So you've got, you know, rock climbing, you have sort of these slides that you start and then go through the hill to come out on, um, towers and other things, etc. There's also some water involved with it. Um, so again, just looking at um, really updating the design of things. You know, this is, this is no longer just the 1950s. We're getting really creative and, and thinking about um, what can be there to encourage kids to play and discover. Looks a little bit like Pat Pat for humans. Exactly, it does, <laughs> right? The AstroTurf. <laughs> which which Clyde Warren Park across the street actually has AstroTurf in their kids' garden because they discovered that on these hills that kids slide down, if you put real turf, forget about it. Um, first of all, it's a little dangerous, and second of all, um, the grass is going to be gone. So this, this AstroTurf uh, solves a lot of problems. So moving on, there's, there's an importance. Absolutely. So, so, so we think of play as play, but um, you know, childhood psychologists and other people who work in this field really know that um, play is important to develop a child. And so, um, you know, there's a there's a section here in the exhibition that talks about some of the things that it promotes. And obviously, you've got nature. So when we talk about muskrat ramble and other things, you've got sort of some natural elements. But uh, the idea that we promote creativity, that we promote mental and social health, and certainly physical health. Um, and also think of the safety concerns. You know, you have to think in these days, in this today's litigious society, about how much metal do you put into a playscape? Because, you know, certainly here in Dallas, Texas, it's going to get hot. And what's going to happen when a kid grabs onto that bar? Um, so all of those things, um, I think this is a great exhibition to sort of really pull back the curtain and show that not only can we be more creative and more innovative, but also the the really sort of complicated factors that um, designers go through as they're working on spaces like this. Well, this is a great collection of spaces. Mm -hmm, absolutely. Playground, extraordinary playscapes. This is touring. Yes, it was, it was originally curated by the Design Museum Boston, um, and so it was at the Boston spaces. Um, and meanwhile, other architecture centers, we have it. Uh, Seattle um, has opened it, so um, I think it could create a real national conversation as well about um, the importance of these kind of spaces. So if anybody wants to stop by and see the exhibit, how do they find you? Absolutely, we're open to the public. We're 1909 Woodall Rogers, right across Clyde Warren Park from the Dallas Museum of Art. Um, here Monday through Thursday, 9 to 6, and then Friday, 9 to 1. Um, more information on this and other things that we do at DallasCFA.com, which is on our website. And then, as all the cool kids are, we're on Facebook and Twitter and Instagram. You can follow us there. Wonderful. Thanks for the time. Thank you. Appreciate it. Guggenholm is a curated contemporary gallery highlighting art, furniture, and unique accessories for the modern home. We've looked around the world for furniture lines that reflect a new modern take on the contemporary aesthetic. Our goal is to show how art can be incorporated into your living space and we feature several local and European artists. Guggenholm, where the art of living meets the art we live with. Visit us at 1426 North Riverfront Boulevard and also at guggenholm.com. The modern lifestyle begins in the home, and you'll find a range of unique living spaces across Dallas's most desirable neighborhoods. Start your search by meeting one of these modern realtors. Poget began his career with a degree in architecture, followed by years of interior design work, including the interior design of several luxury high-rises and commissions for clients' dream homes. Poget's distinct background makes real estate a natural fit.
To wrap up this edition of Modern Dallas TV, we cover local modern events and the art scene. Check out the calendar and the arts page on our website at moderndallas.net. There are always great events from the Dallas Architecture Forum, Preservation Dallas, and the Dallas Center for Architecture has great walking tours in downtown Dallas. Open houses every week, always a great selection. You can create your own mini mod home tour and Todd Camplin covers the art scene for us, from art galleries to museums and artists. You can check out his page on the website. And lastly, if you're in the market for a modern, mid-century modern, contemporary, home, high-rise or loft, we simply have the finest moderns in Dallas. For this week, we appreciate you being part of our show. We'll see you later.